Good morning. It is, we're about two and a half minutes away from the open this morning. It is April 19th, April 19th of March. And very quickly, let me talk to you about my screen. Here, what you see is a two minute chart focused primarily on Apple. Apple happens to be my go-to stock. This is the stock that 80% of the time gives me my first few minutes of profits in the market almost every single day. I believe it's very important for every trader to have this go-to stock. Apple's been my go-to stock for the last couple of years, actually. Now, it could change in another several months or what have you, but my go-to stocks normally are, are stable for me for a number of years. And this stock is responsible for the vast majority of my explosive open in the morning. Now, there are times when I will trade other stocks off the open if my go-to stock is not sort of giving me that warm and fuzzy feeling. It's important, I think, for a trader to have a key go-to stock, especially off the open. In the, in the upper left-hand corner of the screen, you see what is called a personal stock sorter list. This, my specific list has about 15 or so stocks in it, but they're really a core 10 stocks that make up my entire world, all right? These 10 stocks are my personal stock exchange. They are Oliver Velez's personal stock exchange, and it is a rare occasion that I will go beyond this special 10 and trade them. I think, once again, it's important to have a very, very cold down watch list, a list where you you are intimate with these family members. They are family members, in fact. You know them so well. You know their tendencies. You know their idiosyncrasies, their characteristics. And it's these special, this special 10 that make up my trading world. Now, again, just like my go-to stock, the, the stocks in that special 10 can change over time, but it's not a flippant change. It's not changing every day or changing every week or what have you. If I change that list, one or two might be might be changed over a six or eight month period. And it's in a way, it's like we're off on the, we're off and running, guys. In a way, it's very much like I'm a market maker and I my world is these special ten. So what you'll see, Apple is not coming out of the blocks in a way that is very enticing for me. So I'll watch it here, but I'm gonna start flipping through some of my other symbols here. I can tell within the first few seconds whether or not Apple's going to be my play right off the open. Now, it might come into play later in the morning, but it does not seem to be giving me that explosive, I want to run in one key direction for the next six to seven minutes or so. I don't get that feeling from Apple. So I'll flip through here, and what you'll see me doing is just literally going through this top 10. I'll rarely reach the bottom as well, because the ones at the bottom are ones that I'm starting to actually watch as, as potential candidates for my special list later in the year or what have you. So yes, there's a period where I do watch other special potential candidates, but I'm going to flip through symbol by symbol. This this looks a little interesting with me here. XOP is, has gapped down on its flat 200 period moving average. All right, that's sort of interesting. I'll keep that in the back of my mind. All right, I like this Netflix. Look at the powerful open this morning. This is the first two minutes is still trading here. This is a two minute bar you're looking at. It's tall, it's powerful, it's cleared yesterday's late day trading highs. It's sort of like a, a um, skyscraper standing up about taller than the rest of the buildings around it. I like it. And this has the potential to go. I would love to see Netflix actually pull back in and then try to rip to new highs. I love when things happen like that. Now, XOP can go both ways here, but I'll keep that in mind. But I really like the Netflix here. Now, what's tricky about Netflix is that its spread can sometimes be as much as a dollar, but we're trading in a high price range, so that's normal up there around $500 a share. All right. 
So I continue to flip through here. I've, I've picked up, uh, just so you, if you haven't realized, I picked up 500 Netflix. Now, often what I'll do, guys, is I'll put my toe in the water. 500 is extraordinarily small for me. But I'm not seeing, I'm picking up enough, I'm picking up a little small piece of Facebook too. These are toes in the water for me. Now, every trader is different and develops differently. What, how I've developed is I just simply feel out, I can feel out the stock a little better if I'm in the play. And so if I'm not getting an exact clear cut read on the stock, Sometimes I'll just put my toe in the water because I know I do extraordinarily better at reading the stock's tendencies if I'm simply in the play. So this is simply putting a toe in the water on Facebook and Netflix, right? Just to get in there, I'll watch it trade a little bit and pick my moment to maybe build those positions up. This looks like it might drop here a little. All right, the 200 period moving average on XOP is support, but sometimes if that support doesn't hold right away, doesn't prove to be support right away, it can give way, it can crack. So I still have that in mind. It still can go either way. I might give it a shot on the short side, and if it doesn't work, maybe even reverse on the, but as you can see, it's just a very sluggish morning. For me so far here all right I've got my toe in the water on these two there is nothing really going on all right nothing to really write home about I'm continuing to flip through here this XOP continues to meander around by its 200 period moving average again I'm trying to get a, a read on the market it's just it's a weird opening here this morning it's a weird opening I'm flipping through not much movement yet on anything to speak of I'm up very, very marginally here, which is absolutely nothing to me. But Facebook looks like it wants to, to move a little. It does. Again, as I'm flipping through, I'm really gauging the activity of the market itself as a whole. I'm looking at each one of my plays, which are good feelers for the overall market. I'm trying to, to detect their internal state here. I'm trying to put my finger on the pulse of the market by constantly scanning my list to see how things are acting. And a lot of times you can see three or four of your stocks start to look the same and then you've nailed it. You've nailed the common theme running through the entire market. And that gives you your edge. When you know what the central theme, the central desire of the overall market is, all you have to do is just play with that desire and you're playing with an increased edge. So it looks as though, even though it's rather sluggish, I'm seeing an up bias, but a down bias on XOP. So I'm going to take a little piece short here. Let's see. This is skeptical because it's still around the 200 period moving average. Um, even though it's a little below it, it's still around it. Oh, I like the Netflix pulling back in. Remember I told you I want to see that Netflix pull back in. So I'm going to, I'm going to start building. I'm going to start building up on my Netflix here. Okay. Still nothing to write home about here. As of yet, I've only got small toes in the water, nothing big, but let's see if we can turn this morning into something something sort of sweet all right now usually on mornings where the market just doesn't or my stocks just don't jump out of the gates and give me that immediate gain it usually takes a little bit longer than the typical 15 minutes that i require for my morning money sometimes it can take as much as 20 25 minutes and sometimes all the way up to 30 minutes on mornings like this but my average morning is about usually takes me 15 minutes or less to grab my most of my day's profits or most of my morning's profits I should say most of that opening profit I break profitability up in two parts the profitability that comes from the open here's my Netflix is looking beautiful I start bidding for some Netflix down here I've got 500 shares okay so I'll start to pick that up. Now what I will be doing is I'll be bidding underneath 
the market for Netflix so that if it drops, it drops into my bids. It drops into my buy orders. That's one of the key ways to buy when you're dealing with a stock that typically operates with a wide spread. You don't remove liquidity. You don't hit the ask price. You try to pick up the stock on the bid, which calls for a counter trend approach. So in order to buy, you're buying on the way down. And when you're selling, you're selling on the way up. It's a market maker's approach to trading. Sort of sluggish. Uh, Tesla's taken off here. Baidu's taken off a little bit here. While I'm short XOP, it's very sluggish. Okay, nothing to write home about. With Nike, Facebook is steadily grinding upward. I just don't have any size to speak of. Okay, I have a total of 1,500 shares in all of my positions, which is almost a non-position for me. I can go over 8,000, 10,000, 15,000 shares by this point, but it's just one of those mornings. So we'll see. And this is an extraordinarily great morning to actually learn. What I try to do with these videos, if you will, is to really give you an opportunity to sort of sit with me as I sit with the market, to take in my reasoning, take in what I'm doing, try to live in my shoes during this open here. Look at what I'm doing. Watch my actions. Listen to my words. Now, you see a screen that keeps popping up there. I'm checking on my other traders, by the way. That's what that screen is. It's a room where some of my other traders have congregated. I occasionally check it on on them. I've decided to close out my Facebook. Tiny little gain here. That's gone. Just grudgingly went back to, grudgingly worked its way to the upside. I did not get size. So in a way, it's a waste. Now, as you can see, Netflix has pulled back in to pick up my size to the 1,500 shares. So remember, I told you I was bidding under the market for Netflix. And so Netflix has moved down to my bids to increase my overall position from 500 shares to 1,500 shares. And it's continuing to drop or to inch lower. And I will definitely be bidding for more underneath the market. Not here at this price, but underneath the market. My XOP short, very sluggish, not doing anything like a lot of things this morning. So again, nothing to write home about. Guys, let me talk about this for a minute as well. A lot of people see me go into negative territory and I expect negativity to happen first. In fact, I prefer to go negative before I go positive. And that is simply because I am a market maker style trader most of the time, which means I'm a I am often a counter trend player, which means like Netflix, I'm buying on the way down. And for a period of time, I expect and understand with that approach that I am going to be negative. Now, I won't go negative by a certain amount. I have a maximum dollar loss per trade and a maximum dollar loss per day. Now, I don't want to scare you, but my maximum dollar loss per trade is $8,000. My maximum dollar loss per day is $15,000, which is a very, very, very rare occasion that would ever be hit. And it is a rather rare occasion that I reach my maximum loss of $8,000 per trade. Now understand that I have frequent days of 8,000, 6,000, 4,000, 3,000, and very, very consistent. The frequency with which I have a losing day is very, very small. And I work very hard to try to get all of my traders to this high level of consistency. So while that, that number may sound big, it really isn't when you factor in the fact that I have very infrequent losing days as well as infrequent losing trades. So remember, keep in mind, I have an $8,000 maximum loss per trade, a $15,000 loss per day. If I hit the $15,000, I'm done for the day. If I hit $8,000 inside of one single trade, I've learned that it's best just to kill the trade, step aside, regroup, rethink, 
and so forth and so on. Okay, Netflix continues to drop. Let's see if I can pick up a few more shares of Netflix. My XOP is very sluggish here. That's usually not a good sign. All right, if it's going to drop, it should have dropped by now. Now we're dealing with a mixed morning. If you look at the top of the screen, you've got the Nasdaq's up a little bit, or flat to to neutral, mildly down in the other indices. Okay, this. This negative territory here, me being in the red this amount is really not that big of a deal. Remember, I'm playing a counter trend approach. I expect with Netflix to be negative first in anticipation of a strong move right back toward the highs. All right, so remember that first bar and Netflix was a powerful, what I call a powerful bull elephant bar. And then it it's counter trending against that initial elephant bar. But I find that that first initial elephant bar a lot of times sets the tone for what is going to happen next after a brief counter trend move. A small little cost trade did not really feel right to me so I just eliminated that in some ways the same way I did Facebook while there was um, Facebook going in the right direction it just felt a little sluggish to me this what I'm demonstrating on the screen right here is what I expect um, what I expect Netflix to do although it's its pullback is a little more violent than SanDisk's, but notice how SanDisk has pulled back after an initial explosive move to the upside. It's not quite the same, but this counter trend move against that initial powerful move to the upside, or oh, I picked up more Netflix, it's hit my bids, great. Netflix has pulled back into my bids here to pick up more. Now look at that. Um, We'll go back to Netflix, but I love that 200 period moving average under it. Like, look at the 200 on Sandus, that red 200 period moving average on Sandus, that support. The same 200 period moving average is underneath the action in Netflix. I love to buy counter trend moves above the 200 against initial bullish moves. So Sanders has this initial bullish move, the 200 is underneath it, and it's counter trending against the initial bullishness above the 200. I love that scenario. I'm a confident buyer in most of the cases with a scenario like that. Uh, my XOP is looking like it wants to move back to the upside here. This is not a good short. So I'm not going to play around with it. If it starts to to go the wrong way on me, I'll just cut it short. I have no patience for sluggishness. I'd rather it move against me hard than to be sluggish like this. I'm just that type of trader. All right, again, so I'm, I've got Sandisk for 1,000 shares. I love the pullback here on Sandisk. I love the pullback on Netflix. Again, pulling back against initial bullishness all above the 200. Look at the 200 on Netflix. All right, it's a little further away, but that's okay. It's a $400 stock. All right? And yes, it's broken the lows of the of the bull elephant bar, but that's okay because the 200 is that protective net underneath. And I will buy all the way down if that's required. Again, we're talking about a $400 stock. It may seem like this is big moves for a 400 for a stock, but it's $400. It's not a big move. Little bit of movement here on Netflix, moving back to the upside. Remember, Netflix was pulling into my bids, filling me on the bid, not buying on the ask, losing the spread, gaining the spread by buying on the bid. It's falling. It was falling into my buy orders, which were layered at various different prices underneath. In fact, I have even more layered 
they're all the way down to the 200 period moving average. So if Netflix falls even more, it's going to fall into preset orders down there that I have waiting. I'm lurking for it. And of course, this takes some skill to actually develop a knowing or a feel for when a pullback is likely to be a temporary phenomenon versus a negative omen. See, there are pullbacks that are negative omens, that are signs that you ha you should run for the hills. And then there are pullbacks that are just temporary and are brief pauses before snap back to the upside. And I believe that SanDisk is demonstrating this temporary phenomenon. I believe that Netflix is is demonstrating this temporary phenomena again one of the things that gives me great confidence is that 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 flattish 200 period moving average under both of them again my xop is doing nothing here i continue to flip through i'm not necessarily looking for a new opportunity although if one presents itself i'll take it but i'm sort of just i'm keeping my finger on the pulse of the market here all right I'm not just looking at what the Dow and the S&P and the Nasdaq's doing. I'm looking at my stocks. Stocks make up those indices. Stocks give me a better read than the actual indice. The indice is a collection of them, but the stocks are what they make up the index. So let's see if Sanders can push toward the highs. Let's see if Netflix can push toward the highs. Throw me in profitable territory here. As I told you, the way the market opened this morning, all right, led me to believe that it was going to be slightly longer for me to get my morning coffee money, <laughs> my morning opening money. See, this XLP looks like it's going to go up. I'm going to kill this. I'm going to kill this. It's uh, sluggish, giving me no movement in my desired direction. Still hugging around there in the 200. It's gone. All right, so take a small $111 loss there. No big deal. So I'm out of Facebook. I am still 1,000. I'm out of XOP. The SanDisk, is, the SanDisk I had, the cost was sort of like a neutral to no trade. I've got 1,000 SanDisk, 2,000 Netflix. Netflix is moving nicely in my favor here, so I'll start to pare down here. Now, as Netflix is rising, I'm not selling on the bid. I have orders up there near the high. So orders for sale are at different levels up there. And as San, as Nat, Netflix, I'm sorry, moves up, it moves into those sell orders. And I therefore not only gain the spread, but I gain the rebate. Professional traders get paid rebates. Pairing down on Netflix as it moves up. So I've got about... $2,500 so far in total profits, but that could change in a heartbeat here. I'm closed out $1,000 in total profits. That open P&L can change in a heartbeat. It can go much higher or it can disappear in a heartbeat, especially when you're dealing with a $400 stock. So it's having a little bit of trouble up there near the high. I love this game. I love this game. After 28 years of trading the markets professionally, there still is no other activity that gives me this, this joy, that gives me this sense of completeness and satisfaction. All right. All right. So I decided I'm this got out of my Netflix, closed that. Didn't want to fool around here and lose that profitability. It seems like it was having some trouble near the highs. All right. Sand is paring down as well. Boom. I'm out be right before the 10 o'clock hour um, and uh, grabbed a little over $2,000 in profitability. Not bad. Not bad. Usually I have this level of profitability, 1500 2000 whatever, in the first 15 minutes of the trading day. Every morning can't be exactly the same. However, considering the sluggishness of the immediate open, I think we did fairly well. All right, it took us a little bit longer to get our 2,000 plus profitability. That takes care of dinner tonight. Um, but I'm, I'm hoping these videos are helping you in a certain way. And I strongly encourage you to 
send me comments. Let me know what you'd like to see. Give me your opinion about what I'm doing. Um, it is extraordinarily time consuming and it does affect my trading a little bit to talk to you and to trade through the market while trying to educate you is a juggling act. But I love to teach and I love to trade. I'm willing to do that. I don't want to waste your time and I certainly don't want to waste my time if these videos are not of a benefit to you. So I'm interested in hearing your comments. I'm interested in hearing whether or not you're getting a benefit from what we're doing here. At any rate, this is Oliver Velez coming to you live on March 19th, 2015, signing off only for now until our next trading session. Ciao.